Hey YouTube, this is Southern Purple One, and this is probably my most important video I've ever made if uh, a nuclear war happens. Now, I'm not saying a nuclear war is going to happen. Um, I'm saying that I'm trying to get you prepared because so many people have no idea how to prepare for it. Uh, it's just not something they've studied. My first paper in college I wrote on uh, civil defense and the inadequacy, and that was a long time ago. Uh, I wish I still had that paper. I don't think I do. But I've always been interested in it. I've always stu studied it in depth. Um, and being in the military, I, I wanted to know as much as possible because uh, my job would be to work through it if, if the mission had to be accomplished. And I wanted to make sure I could do the mission, but I wanted to make sure I could protect myself and others. So let me go into it. If you don't have a plan, you're going to die. I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to die a t terrible death. Uh, your kids are going to suffer. Am I trying to scare you? Yes, I'm trying to scare you um, because I want you to prepare. It's not go out and spend a bunch of money, but at least get a plan in your head. Get a plan written down so you know what to do so you don't have to panic at the last minute because if you don't have a plan, you're going to sh have sheer panic in your life. You're going to make wrong decisions and you will not be the positive influence in your community to help others survive. But if you're prepared, at least with a plan, and if you've followed through and done as much as you could on it, and it really depends on your location, how much money you have, uh, your dedication to taking care of your family. And you have to answer all those questions. I can just give you some information and try to motivate you uh, to work out a plan. So I've told you, you know, go in the center of your house, take everything you own, and put it around you. Uh, I've also talked about plastic. Plastic will not save you. I got a couple more more emails about the plastic. The plastic is to keep fallout from entering. As dust falls, if you have a broken window here, dust is going to get in. So you have to make sure you do whatever you can to seal that window. Um, if you're not in the blast area, the window probably will not get broken. But in case it does, at least draw your blinds. Uh, if you have time, put plastic up. Then remember, you have your roof here, probably has either vents here and the hot air gets drawn through into your attic and then out your ridge. These vents have to be uh, closed up. You have to do something because if not, fallout will fall into your attic uh, and it will contribute to higher doses of radiation. So if you can close them, uh, some houses have the vents here at the ends. You probably have seen those. You got to be able to put something, even cardboard in the inside over that would secure it so things won't get in. If you have any plumbing or any type of other vents, if you have a wood stove or a fireplace, you got to close this stuff off so no dust can enter into your house. You're trying to protect yourself from dust. The dust is radioactive material that was somewhere at a ground zero location. Uh, the uh, explosion vaporized really everything and turned it into dust and that is things that were at ground zero. Now they're drifting with the weather and as the wind moves it around it will fall out of the sky. It will fall soon if it's a lot of rain that pushes it to the ground. If it's not a lot of rain it will drift farther. So you have to be able to protect yourself. This is a typical house. You see this is the grass and this is a basement. Probably 75% of people don't have basements, 50%. I don't know what the exact number is. But if you don't have a basement and you just go into your house, a typical house is about two to three. It, it's closer to three if you have a second story. And this is a wood structure, a wood structure. Most people have a wood structure, no basement. So if you do nothing, you'll probably have about a PF factor of two. So you can divide all the radiation outside by two, you get about half of it. Now you might say, oh, that's awesome. No, that will still kill you many, 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 many times over. It's not even close. Um, let's say you have a basement under a wooden structure with a basement. Just being in the basement will give you a PF factor of 10. The problem with most basements is the basement wall goes up because they don't want dirt right against the wooden structure. And you have a gap here between your foundation, your wall going up, going into your floor. So as you can see, when radiation falls, it only will travel with the gamma radiation, travel in straight lines, but it will be shooting radiation. So if you could 
do anything you can if you got a patio block stack them up here if you got dirt just find dirt on the property and cover both sides of your house to help protect yourself so you go into the basement you got a pf of 10. now there's safer spots in your basement let's look at this picture right here you are looking down this is looking down as a bird's eye view you want to go into the corner find your corner that you think is the most protective corner and 10 feet you can just use your regular shoe and mark off 10 feet if you don't have a tape 10 feet then go on the other corner and go 10 feet and then that is your safest spot draw a line there you want to be within that 10 feet most of the time you don't want to be in the center of your house because it will be getting bombarded from all sides then for the first few days do what you can to lay down in the corner I would put my head in the corner that's the safest spot and my feet out here so if you only got a couple people you can shelter lay down for the first couple days it will make huge difference on the effects um, and the amount of dosage you're going to get so you want to keep everybody within this corner that's for safety let's hypothetically say you got a little bit of time now this is a side view this is your basement this is the dirt around your basement if you have any ability to get some two by sixes, two by eight to make a lean to, basically build something to lean against the wall and then pile sandbags up, pile blocks up, whatever you got. This will increase your survivability chance. So if you did this in the corner, your PF factor is going to go way up. Even just one row of sandbags going up. Now, if you do make this, make sure it's strong, make sure it doesn't slide down the wall and kill you. Um, and this is the place to put all your heavy objects around it put some reinforcement in here only do this if you know what you're doing i don't want you squished or get killed because everything crashed in on you You have to build this where it won't fall in um, but this is an easy way to up it you'll probably up it into at least probably pfs of 40 50 60 70 it just depends so if you do this and you come up in your basement or outside and you cover this with dirt because you know there's only a, a wall in there, cover this with dirt on both sides all around your house, you're going to increase your survivability. Now, let's say you have a regular house, but it has brick and it's a concrete house. Maybe you're in Florida and it's concrete and brick. Come down here, your basement can provide you with already a 50 protection factor, PF factor. So instead of it just being a regular basement with a wood house, you've already gone up to 50. Then, Add in something like this, you could easily go into the PF factor of 100. I think, don't quote me on this one because I, I haven't read any updated, but I think for a community shelter in the United States, it used to be, it had to maintain a 40 protection rate. And I think 40 is so inadequate. I would never put my grandbabies in a 40. I'm looking for a 500. I'm looking for a 1,000 PF factor for my babies. Um, Let's go down here and show you the reason if you don't have a lot of stuff in your house and you're just a normal person, it's going to be hard to do anything because this is what you're going to need. Let's look down here to get a thousand PF factor. And that's my standard. And that's, that's the gold standard right there. You're going to need four inches of lead. And that means on the sides and on top, you, or you're going to need 10 inches of solid steel all around you. Or let's go down to concrete, good old concrete and cement. Um, you're going to need 24 inches of solid concrete. That's a lot. Most people cannot just put that over top of their head in their basement. It will crush them. They will, won't have the, uh, the wood or the structure to support that. If you go to dirt, you need 36 inches of packed dirt to get you a PF of 1,000. If you need water, it's 72 inches. It's better than nothing but... Um, water's not really that good but if you have a lot of totes you can definitely fill it up and then use that water as the crisis goes on if you have lumber stacks of two by four you're going to need 110 inches of lumber to give you 1000 pf so all of these are 1000 so you can see if you just take your couch your love seat your clothes your mattresses your christmas stuff it's not heavy you're going to need so much, so you're only going to increase your PF by just a little bit. Um, really not survivable. 
you're going to have to come up with a great, great plan. That's why I want you to, I want to scare you right now because you might think, oh, Dave said I can pile everything. Yeah, you can for a worst case and you have no other chance because remember, we don't know what the fallout patterns are going to be. We don't know what targets are going to get hit. So it's a lot of variables, but I want you to be scared right now. I want you to get a plan. Um, so you can protect yourself and protect your family. The first thing I would say is uh, the first few days are critical. If you can stay out of the, the bulk of the radiation after three days, um, I'm not saying go outside your shelter, not at all. I'm saying it will have decreased by such a huge amount. It is very fast reacting to the downside. So I hope this helps. I will do more as long as you want them. I will do them, try to educate you. I'm trying to keep these short. If I give you a two hour lecture, how to survive, you'll probably tune out after 10 minutes and forget 90% of it. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.